There was a pastor many years ago who said that whenever something truly evil happens in the world, look carefully, Satan's fingerprints are all over it. And there's a kind of a political equivalent to that. Whenever something really bad happens for the United States, even domestically or internationally, Obama's fingerprints are usually all over it. And that is the case here, even with the return of the Taliban, believe it or not. Now, you might remember several years ago, 2014, I believe it was, that uh, Obama arranged the Bergdahl trade. Think of it, one military deserter, Bo Bergdahl, um, is returned in exchange for a group, I believe five seasoned Taliban commanders, one of whom was at Gitmo. Uh, listen to Obama talking about this. The Taliban who were being held in Guantanamo uh, was conditioned on the Qataris keeping eyes on them and creating a structure in which we can monitor their activities. We will be keeping eyes on them. Now, Obama carefully hedges his remarks, and he says, you know, these five Taliban commanders are not gonna be sent back to Afghanistan. They're going to Qatar, where we will be keeping an eye on them. Of course, no eye was ever kept on them. Qatar is playing a dirty double game. They do their, they work hand in hand with Iran. They work hand in hand with the Taliban. In fact, the Taliban leadership has been sitting in Qatar uh, and is returning from Qatar to take full power in Kabul. Now, one of these five guys is a guy named Kairula Karikwa. And this guy, very um, seasoned battlefield commander, very bad guy, um, surfaced uh, recently um, when he appeared with a group of Taliban to meet Biden's envoy to Afghanistan, a guy named Zalmay Khalizad. So Zalmay Khalizad is representing America, and here on the other side of the table is a Taliban guy who happened to be one of the exact five guys that supposedly Obama um, sent back, but sent back in a manner that he would be under constant supervision, not causing any trouble whatsoever, except he happens to be one of the key guys leading the assault uh, on Kabul. Now, this guy uh, was also on uh, television recently, the same guy, um, the Gitmo release guy, talking about how um, he was in Gitmo and how, the, how America has, quote, been oppressing our people for 20 years. He is believed by many to be the mastermind of regime change in Afghanistan. So think about the significance of this. We've got a guy in our own captivity. We let him go. And this is part, by the way, of a Gitmo catch and release plan. It's not, he's not the only guy. Just recently, uh, Biden uh, released a prisoner, the accused terrorist Abdul Latif Nasser, uh, and there's a whole bunch of other prisoners, by the way, with left-wing civil rights attorneys representing them, petitioning for all them to be released on civil rights grounds. They haven't really had a proper trial. They haven't been convicted by a jury. So the bottom line of it is that these thugs, um, these um, Islamic radicals, uh, are getting out. Uh, and this is just a conspicuous example of a guy who gets out and uh, essentially spearheads the final assault that has led to the fall of Kabul, the humiliation of America. And I think Obama somewhere is sitting back smiling and thinking, wow, you know, I, I was able to, even, even out of power, uh, looking back on all the things I did, look at the mortal blows I've been able to inflict on my own country.